Welcome to the With Winning in Mind podcast. I'm Heather Sumlin with Troy Basham, and today we're going to answer a question that was submitted by one of our clients. Oh, what so is that? Every now and again, people will send an email to info at mentalmanagement.com and ask a question. And this I felt like was good to get your take on. So I'm really curious. All right. Okay. So essentially, the question was about basketball, college basketball going on right now. And he asked if we thought that when they do free throws, is it okay for them to do the high fives? High five, high five, yeah, like that. After a free throw, even when they didn't make it, is that good or not? Based on mental management. Based on mental management, I would say no. Why? Well, so we're looking at this specifically is a situation where the person has two free throws. Okay. So they miss the first one and people come up and do that. Mm. Or they make the first one, people do this. And that's all we see. We don't, there's, nothing's being said. We just hear that. So, what is the person supposed to do after the action? So, in middle management, we would look at a task of there's an anticipation, action, and reinforcement phase of a task. So, the anticipation phase is preparing for it, which you see a lot of mm-hmm. basketball players do a good job of that. Well, and they, they might dribble a couple of times and they're looking. Yeah, they get That's, set, they get they're set. focused, and of course the fans are trying to distract them and all in the mm-hmm. background. And But they go through some sort of like a pre-shot routine, you mm-hmm. know, and right. mentally focusing, physically, they look like doing the same thing. Steve Nash was really good at this. John Stockton in the day was really good at that. I mean, very consistent with their, you know, mm-hmm. routine before they shoot the basket. Well, we look at the reinforcement phase is what do you think of do me the after as being very important. So if someone misses the basket, right, they, admit, mm-hmm. they miss it, right? They don't make it. And a player goes up to the person and goes, hey, and they do that. That's distracting them from focusing on the correction. Mm-hmm. Because I want them to, okay, what's well, the correction? So then the, you improve the probability of making the next one. Not being distracted by my teammates, but now when I make a free throw, and they go, hey, that was that was good. And they do that. Well, now it reinforces that. Now it proves the probability that I'm going to do that again. So one, if okay, so if you make the basket, make sure I'm understand. You make the basket, you do the high five. High or five. low five or whatever. It is. Whatever five. And it's like, ah, awesome job, awesome. way to go. That reinforces positively in the self-image. Yes, it's like me to shoot and make the basket. Awesome. So that doesn't distract because you're actually reinforcing correctly. Which is what we want. Whereas if you miss it, you've got work to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if I'm doing the same thing and doing that, now I'm reinforcing it's okay to do that. And, and chances I are, don't do, that. Is it, do you think chances are too that they just don't have a reinforcement process? That's I would consistent. say that's safe to say. A lot of people probably don't have a reinforcement phase. If you look at our system that we teach from a mental management perspective, it's based on those three phases. Mm-hmm. We, we care how the person's thinking before, during, and after each task that they have. So just like the, before the game starts, I want them to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the game. You mm-hmm. know, And then they're going to play the game, and then after the game – there's a reinforcement phase. You you right. see coaches in the locker room. You know they do little clips and how their brain closure. And they're talking about what the team did well. You know the NFL. They show clips where they're giving the game ball. You know to right. somebody and they're reinforcing some of the good things what they did well and they're bringing closure to that day. Well, it's every task has that. So you just divide the different tasks. So when you look at a free throw, and I make it, I want to reinforce the positive. Mm. Because I want to do it again. If I don't accomplish what I want, I need to focus on the correction of some sort. And there's steps on what we need to do and how we right. do that. You know, I'm, we're making it sound like it's simple, but <laughs> to keep it simple, it's like, oh, what am I going to do to improve the probability I'll make the next one? I need to focus on that before it's time mm-hmm. to shoot the next free throw. Because you're talking about a proactive element in a sport right. that's very reactive. Like when you miss a shot, there's a rebound, and there's things going. You react to what's going on. You don't have time to consciously think. But in a free throw, the player has time to consciously think. So this came up. We had a couple years back. Oh, the name uh, slips my mind. The guy who wrote the book on free throws. I mean, he's 
oh, held the record on making the most consecutive free throws and yeah, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. I don't know. Met him. Fascinating individual. Fascinating how he approaches the game. In his view, there's no reason why you should be missing a free throw. They call it a free throw because it's, it's like a, a free point. Free point, exactly. Oh, that makes it's so like, much sense now. Me and basketball, we're getting it now. Yeah, it's like here you go. How do you not not make mm-hmm. the shot? Right. His opinion on why players don't make it is because in the flow of the game, you don't have time to think. You're just doing. So your your subconscious skill takes over. Right. And this is why the elite. Athletes are so much fun to watch because they're able to do things that just the average person like, how do they do that? Because mm-hmm. they spent years and years building that skill to where now they don't have to constantly think about anything. They just do it. Right. But now they got a free throw, and guess what they're doing? They're thinking because they have time to think. I mean, all you need is a few seconds. It stops the flow of the game. Yeah. And so he, his version is, okay, why are so many people missing? And he looked at college specifically. And he's like, if – these college players just improve their free throw percentage. It would totally change how many games are won mm-hmm. by their team. I could see that. And he goes, why isn't anyone addressing it from a mental side of it? And I think it's a good point. In our view, it'd be, well, they're probably not breaking down the thought process. And is it consistent before each free throw? During, you know, during the shot, is that consistent? And then after it, is there a consistent way in how you think in those three areas? And they're probably not thinking of it that way. They're probably just thinking more of a physical routine, getting the flow, getting the rhythm kind of thing. And if we look at it from a breakdown of, okay, you need a systematic approach on how to think in these three areas. Mm-hmm. If you do that on a consistent basis and it builds the self-image of the player, oh, I think you take a person that's a 75% average you know, free throw percentage, that individual could easily go to 85, 90%. Well, so maybe what we should do for our Patreon members, we have a Patreon membership. For those of you who want more information, you can become one of our Patreon members. And for our silver and gold level members, we do additional content. So what I think we should do after we're done with this episode is record an episode specifically for them where you break it down in more detail and explain that reload process and whether that's for a basketball free throw or whether that's for any target sport. Yeah. And in this example with the two shots after the first shot, regardless if he makes it or doesn't, these steps would be mm-hmm. very similar to what you're going to do in every other sport that we have. And the reactive times we have, it becomes more complicated. So you're basically saying, all right, when we're, when we're given this high five situation, even when we miss, we're distracting that individual from properly correcting from being ready to shoot the next one. So does this happen in other sports? Do you see this in other situations? Yeah, I see it. I mean, growing up, I played soccer a lot. And one of the common things we did in soccer, I hated this. It was it was more with high school soccer. Mm-hmm. When Brian and I got to go to Europe and play in Europe during the uh, 87 summer uh, season, mm-hmm. it was quite different. Those players didn't do this. Mm-hmm. But in back in the day in high school, if you made a bad pass – it was appropriate to say my bad. And the idea is, okay, I'm taking ownership of it, so it's okay. That's a good thing. And at the time, yeah, okay, I want to take ownership of it. So all of us were guilty of doing it. It wasn't until years later. I mean, I didn't understand a lot of middle management when I was 14, you Mm -hmm. know. But growing up later, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of, okay, what's a better way to communicate to the the individual? So – you wouldn't want to say my bad because what are you picturing in your own head that you made a mistake? It's well, like you to do that. You're also so you're, giving them the same thing, right? So you're yeah. you're saying, oh, I made a bad pass. And then they're like, yeah, you made a bad pass. So you're both picturing bad passes. Correct. And I'm probably not very confident that you're going to give it a good yeah. pass next time. I'm not going to trust you again. You know, like if you gave me a bad pass <laughs> now, what's going to convince me? And you knew it <laughs> and you admitted it. Well, what makes me think that you're going to be able to do it correctly mm-hmm. next time? Okay, so what's a better way of doing it? Well, a better way of doing it would be, I'll, I'll, get, it, I'll get you next time. Right. Now what's the imprint? Oh, I get the pass. Exactly. So a good example of this is looking at Tom Brady, the NFL. Mm-hmm. So people know, well, why is he the GOAT? I think he's the GOAT because he, he does this. When you hear Pete players mic'd up, you know, there's that, I think that's really cool how they mic the players up. I'm sure there's some like, oh, you don't want me to be mic'd up. You know, there's no <laughs> telling what's going to come out of you know, my mouth, so don't do it. But – Tom Brady, it was in the Super Bowl in Atlanta, and of course he's mic'd up, and 
he's on the sideline. I mean, they're losing. They're they're trying to come back, and he throws a pass. The guy wasn't where he was supposed to be, so it was an incomplete pass. Could have been a touchdown, right? Mm. And Tom Brady goes to him. The guy's upset, obviously, because he ran the wrong route. Right. He knows he ran the wrong route. You did, he's not going to go over there and beat the guy up. It's like, how could you run that route? No, what, what Brady did that I thought was really interesting was he goes over to him. He says, hey, it'll be there next time. In other words, I'm going to throw the ball at the same location during that play, but now I know you're going to be there. Yeah. So now what do you think the guy's imprinting? Catching the ball. He's, he's like, oh, okay, he's not mad at me. Yeah. He knows I normally run the route. He knows I normally catch the And he has confidence that I'm going to be there next time because he said the ball will be there next time. So it's not shocking to me that they were able to come back mm. and win that game when you have someone that's focusing on what's next rather than what happened. It's not, you know, the old saying, it's not important what happens to you in life. It's important of how you handle what happens to your life. Well, how is he handling the situation? He's going up to the person and saying, hey, look, I'll get it there next time mm-hmm. because I know you're going to run the, the route without having to tell him all that. Brilliant. I thought that was, that was that's, great. That's smart. It's like just that. like, you know, when, when the Dak Prescott with the Dallas Cowboys is going through his contract dispute and everyone's like, oh, he, they don't need to pay him this much money. Oh, they need to pay him this money. Like polarizing kind of, kind of thing. Well, he was mic'd up at a game playing the Cleveland Browns, they weren't winning. And there's a scene where he walks over to his offensive lineman, offensive lineman looking up at the, the scoreboard. He walks over to him and he says, hey, we get to look at the scoreboard after the game. Mm, there's a time and a place. Exactly. So what's the picture? Let's play. Not focus on that. Let's focus on what's important here. And so that's what I think is really important when we look at these three phases of a task. And the reinforcement phase often gets overlooked. Well, is that also where distractions pop in the most? Like I work with dog agility handlers, and it's when they're exiting the ring, when people walk up to him and give him unsolicited advice and say, hey, did you know you dropped that bar? So they're trying to reinforce correctly, but they're being interrupted, and there's distractions that are happening. Do you feel like it happens more in the reinforcement phase? Absolutely, because I don't think people really think about what is the proper thing to think about after I did mm-hmm. something. And it's socially acceptable in our society. It's not just sports. This is just in general what's accepted in our society. Talking about ways to handle things better or complaining about what happened. Well, complaining is just turn on the news. What are they what are they talking about? They're complaining that this isn't being done, that's not being done, this happened, and why did it happen? Rather than what are we gonna do about it? You know, now some people do focus on that. But there's far fewer people doing that, and there's way more people talking about what happened, complaining, focusing on the problem, Mm -hmm. which I would rather focus on the solution, what I do moving forward, and what can I control to improve the probability of being successful in the future. That's, I think, more important than getting caught up with what society is doing. And just think about it. You're always going to want to go to the easiest thing to do. What's the easiest thing to do? Complain. Yeah, but it's the most destructive. Yeah. And so I just want to give the right imprints to the individual at the right time to where they can build confidence, you know, create a self-image that I can do this or protect the confidence of the self-image that they currently have Mm -hmm. and then move forward from that. So, I'm not a big fan of the whole my bad and you know this kind of stuff. I'm much more of an I'll get it next time. It'll be there next time. I like that. And so when you see top-level athletes like Tom Brady demonstrate this, you would think the rest of the world would be like, okay, he's the GOAT. Why? Because he's talking that way. Mm-hmm. And it's not that he just says it. He does it. He believes he, it. He literally will do that. He'll like, oh, I'll get you next time. And guess where the ball is next time? It's right in the guy, guy's hands. But he's just reinforced that he will. Correct. And so every imprint counts. So it it, it builds that self-image. Every single imprint counts. So if it's a positive imprint, self-image grows. If it's a negative imprint, self-image shrinks. And I think a lot of times we just don't realize that. Yeah. And people are reinforcing the negative, and then they're shrinking their self-image, and you're going to perform up to your self-image, not your skill, and so here we go. Yeah, and then the, the individual's not confused. You know, they know exactly what to do. It's mm-hmm. pre-planned. Oh, this happens, I'm going to do this. 
Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's pre-planned on, okay, if this happens, how am I going to handle it? I mean, if you're, the, if you're a quarterback of an NFL team, you are the leader on the field. It's just the requirement of your position. So if something doesn't go well, you've got to make sure everyone's in the right mindset. Mm-hmm. And so you look at the top guys. They, they keep those individuals in the right mindset. Because what are you going to do when you mess up? You're probably going to be hard on yourself. You're going to get upset. You're going to get mad. It's just the normal thing to do. But once you become an elite-level athlete and you're an adult, I think there's a better way to handle it. And that's what we're talking about. Handling things the right way that benefit the individual. And then the other thing that we're – we're kind of talking around is we're talking about there's a team dynamic to this. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about how does it affect that one individual? Okay. They, they missed the shot or they missed the pass. Okay. It affects them, but how does it also affect the team? So go back to the basketball analogy. In my view, an individual that is, you know, they're, they probably feel like they, it's okay. You'll get the next one. I can understand that. Right. You'll get the next one. But you're bringing attention to what you don't want to have happen. You don't want them to miss. You want them to make the basket, right? So by going up to say it's okay, you'll get it next time, you're basically saying to the individual, the, the picture that you're giving them is it's okay for me to make that mistake. But the reality is, no, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, the that time, where do they need the focus? Then the focus needs to be on, okay, how do I correct this? Because i, I got to do it again in a few seconds. And that's why I think it's better for players not to. Let the individual focus on what they need to focus on to get ready for the next shot to prove the probability they're going to make the next shot. I get the encouragement. I'm not against encouragement. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a time and place for it. And right at this example, I just think it's better to say, okay, when you miss the basket, don't do not do anything. Let the guy focus on, on what they need to do. Get ready for the next one. If they make it, hey, congratulate them. Reinforce it because that's what we want to encourage the next time before it. I like that approach. Just like I'll get that pass to you next time rather than it's my bad. And there is a step-by-step process that you could imprint something better that helps improve the probability that you're going to do better in the future rather than repeat the mistake that you just made. Well, I think it's a good point. And I think for everyone who's listening, kind of to recap what you're saying, try to avoid the distractions in the reinforcement phase, whether that means don't celebrate if the celebration is not warranted. If it is, let's celebrate. If there's not a reason to, let's let that player regroup and get ready to sink that next shot. Let's be positive in the way we communicate with each other. And if you want more details on exactly what you should do in the reinforcement phase, join our Patreon membership at the silver or gold level, and we're going to record something really exciting for you. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video if you do, and share it with someone. Thanks.